So, uh, hi, I'm Kathy with a K, a radio broadcaster in Honolulu. And uh, I have this YouTube thing, uh, Hawaii POV, a talk story series, radio, music, Hawaii, and Billy Craven. He's in Chicago, and he used to be a Honolulu resident, New York resident, Guamanian. Guam to the core. Guam forever. <laughs> but Billy, I, I've been in touch with him over the years, and I, he was somebody that I had intentionally been seeking out to uh, do a talk story with because um, he was going to be on island this month. Am I saying last too much? Week. Am I sharing too much? Last week. No, I was, I was supposed to be there last week. Yeah. Then and, the plague. Uh, well, March 25th, 2020 here was the statewide order in Hawaii where stay at home, work at home, the 14 day quarantine if you uh, visit our islands. When did it happen for, you, uh, for the COVID-19 in Chicago? Same. I have no idea. <laughs> it's been <laughs> kind of the same, but our governor's been extremely proactive. Uh, mm. he, he issued a, a stay at home and uh, quarantine and then shortly thereafter uh, ordered that restaurants and bars and other public places like that got closed down. I am a fan of Gallery F and can we talk about Gallery F before I make you deep dive into uh, the recesses of your memory of your youth and all that kind of stuff? What I can remember, sure. <laughs> so tell me about Gallery F. I've yet to visit, revisit Chicago, but uh, I just know it's a art gallery that supports local artists in Chicago proper. But you welcome, or like who who is um, who is Gallery F? Who is part of the the staffing and the team? And, uh, uh, G gallery F. When it, originally when I opened it at the end of 2012, I had a partner, but uh, that didn't fare too well. Mm -hmm. uh, ta -da, ta -da. That's for another episode. So I opened up Gallery F in, at the end of 2012 to primarily work with local printmaker, local street artists and graffiti writers. Some of them who like now reside in Hawaii, Melon. Nikki. You know, yeah, kind of, yeah Nikki. It's kind of an OG from Chicago and I love that yeah. he's, you know, enjoying the life in the islands right now. We uh, immediately brought upon um, printmaker artists from all over the world. Um, and since living in New York for a while, I had made a number of acquaintances there too. So, uh, you know, as far as street artists and graffiti, we had uh, a lot of the local Chicago artists and a selection of New York and international and printmakers, um, you know, like concert posters and such, art prints um, from artists all over the world. But, uh, and then right after opening the gallery, I would approach businesses that had board ups because where we were at in Chicago, Logan Square, there were still uh, a lot of board ups, businesses that had been closed for many of them decades um, mm -hmm. that had been closed and boarded up and, you know, uh, was just uh, an extreme state of dereliction uh, along very popular thoroughfare of um, Milwaukee Avenue. So I just, you know, would knock on doors and talk to business owners, ask for permission to curate murals um, on their spaces. Mm -hmm. So just taking a personal self-initiative to beautify the local neighborhoods, documenting street art and graffiti on various social platforms for, you know, like the last 20 years. Um, yeah. I had made acquaintances, and so I would, you know, do my best to find legal spots to have permission to curate and paint um, with the local uh, artists. Have her running um, murals on the streets and not have to worry about mm -hmm. being chased or, you know, penal from the system right. um, so we did that for a long time and uh, local businesses uh, enjoyed it they allowed us to paint more and more and more and now we have street art tours from all over the world come to the neighborhood because of what we've done the artwork that I remember uh, first seeing of yours were just drawings and sketchings during a like the techno house period um, tune in turn on drop out you made drop out to the acid house yeah, and then you had uh, printed them up on uh, shirts. Yeah, that shirt was referencing um, Genesis B. Orridge and Psychic TV because I was like really into, there was an album, uh, Psychic TV was doing a bunch of Acid House stuff and then uh, uh, I really loved it. Yeah. Well, your music, your music background is so wide and varied. Um, many people uh, who still live in Hawaii or like moved away and come back. It's like, if we talk about uh, Jelly's 44P coin, which is yep. now uh, where 
a K two N two, and a big old uh, luxury building. Yeah, that parking lot in that warehouse is yeah gone. Sears is gone. So you know, <laughs> there's no reference of people. That was the best lunch truck though. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a lunch truck there that made the best uh, vegetarian sandwich, and the dark side. Peter says that the lunch truck you could also place bets. Peter uh, Bond said that uh, they were also uh, they doubled as a bookie because you would have like suggestions not only as an import buyer with music, but the import buyer wasn't things. It wasn't necessarily music at uh, Jellies that was outside of the U.S., but it would be like bootleg and things that just were not uh, being released by the major labels, right? Yeah, I mean, even simple things like you know, Technotronic, you know, that pump up the jam, jammy. Yeah, you know, yeah. we'd have to import that before it got popular or tiptoe. Uh, some other house stuff would call his house, and his dad would answer the phone and connect me to his son. Shipping <laughs> 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 records from the mainland, but you know, it was awesome in those days, just because um, you know there was really no internet. If you wanted records, you called the distributors, or you. Called the label, or you called the dude's dad in the <laughs> and he got his son, and you know you brought records in. You originally you was born and raised in Guam. No, right? San Diego. San Diego. My dad's military. My mom's from Guam. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you were yeah, military okay. brat. Oh my gosh, so, so you're we, like a California kid. I was born did <laughs> in San Diego. <laughs> right. <laughs> But then, uh, you know, Cold War America, so we moved to a different part of the U.S. every six months mm. while my dad was out on the aircraft carrier patrolling the oceans. When I graduated high school in 81, uh, we got transferred to Honolulu. He was transferred to Pearl Harbor, and we lived in Aliamanu Crater, kind of between Pearl Harbor, sort of, between Pearl Harbor and Aia. And I uh, lived there for a few years, and then they got transferred to, I think, Guam. After that, and I stayed, and you know, I lived in Hawaii for like almost 20 years. So you were a kid here, and how did you start working at Jellies? Uh, I live right down the road, the one on King Street, called The Bike Shop. I worked at their warehouse out by the airport, um, B1 Distributors. I lived in the owner they had it owned right behind the bike shop on King Street. Um, I mm -hmm. lived there, and that was on Oak Street. Uh, and, I mean Elm Street, sorry. Uh, and Jelly's 404 P.E. Koi was just up the road. So I would always go to Jelly's um, after a long day of work and taking a disco nap. Um, and then I would always go in and look at records and Norm would be there and I'd always ask him for a job. And he'd always say, no, kid. Because uh, Norm likes to say <laughs> kid. <well. laughs> you know, I would always be there and he'd always see me. And then one day he just said, Hey kid, you still need a job? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, okay. And then, you know, he just told me to keep track of what sells. And then he split. He had to go run some errands. Then I worked there for a number of years. A lot of great people there. Well, you're the one who um, turned me on to Skinny Puppy, uh, Sisters of Mercy. I really like fell in love with a lot of the uh, 4AD artists because of you. You dabbled in DJing. There was a there, you remember there were like little like clubs or restaurants that would repurpose themselves and do that, like Empire. But that was like, I don't know, in the 1990 something. I don't know. Yeah, my favorite eggplant. There was a bunch of like little, yeah. little uh, after hours clubs or knock knock clubs over there. And uh, my favorite eggplant was like probably my yeah. favorite one. But uh, I was going to the clubs every night. But I just, you know, uh, I would spin a couple records, uh, but I was never any good. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you leave um, that retail to go into clothing? After Jellies, um, uh, I had just gone in, into clothing and retail and worked for Diesel for a little while. Worked for Prada first, I think. And then Diesel, and then Diesel transferred me to Chicago for two years, and then New York for six or so. Mm. And then back to whole, uh, back to Chicago, where I've been for the last twelve years. Were you doing um, like like sales, like on the floor, or were you doing um, like windows? What was your? My brother was doing the windows. I was doing floors. Oh yeah, Kifi. I mentioned Keefe. I said Keefe when you when you exited the conversation <laughs> and before you returned. Yeah, Keefe's still living in our place in um, in Brooklyn. 
Oh, cool, cool, cool. How is he doing? Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful day, so he's out at the park somewhere in Brooklyn, just uh, uh -huh. keeping a nice social distance and then soaking up some sun. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not a very uh, social person, especially like, you know, it's like, okay, you're not dead, so uh, I know you're good. I just remembered that you had a, a BMX bike that you let me borrow when I was living in Waikiki because I would be like a, a skosh late for work. And you were like, if I give you a means of transportation, will that help you? <laughs> I'm like, yes. But I was like so close. I was like Hobron, Hobron Lane to uh, Decoy. So yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. see why I should have been late at all. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, wait, you key, that's why. Oh, yeah. I'm still drunk. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Take team. You talk to them. You, you hand them all the yellow man. Can I see the yellow man cassette? Which one? The green tape? <laughs> <laughs> With the yellow writing. <laughs> oh okay so welcome back <laughs> we'll see yeah why gallery f why the the name gallery f yeah the letter f is everyone's favorite word oh. <laughs> <laughs> got it got it got it and we have a lower a basement gallery and the the uh sign on the door says gallery f u and it stands for f underground Oh, cute, cute, cute. So when I discovered your your social, in particular your Instagram, was I think you were still in New York City, you and your family, and you would share images of water towers. And I, I just love architecture. I just love shapes and things. But we don't have water towers in Hawaii. The closest thing would be like that pineapple <laughs> and dual cannery back in the day. You know, yeah, I mean, well just structures that got uh, taken down many many years ago what is it about the the water towers that got you to just start taking one picture and then it became your jam uh, especially in the uh, older major cities like uh, chicago and new york the uh, water tower was a very essential part a very quintessential part of the city and the neighborhoods um that were everyone relied on every day it was sort of like white noise to the eyeballs they didn't mm. see them but i just never being around water towers because it was always efficiently running water wherever I lived and they would use the water towers to put you know direct water up to the top of a structure and then allow gravity to feed the uh, units and businesses and and stuff within that yeah. building or that area they were just a beautiful part of the architecture and loving graffiti and uh, stuff like that for many years there were also like these like very sweet spots that um, only the most daring graffiti writers would get up on so mm -hmm. it was sort of like uh, it, it, it was a no-brainer it's like I love the architecture I love that they were overlooked uh, and I love that they were a prized spot for graffiti writers How about and, you? Do you, who are your favorite um, artists now in Chicago? I mean, I'm, and whenever I ask that, it's just like, you're gonna leave somebody out or somebody might feel slighted, but it's like every artist that is on Gallery F's site, you like them, I would imagine, you know, it's just like, they're, they're great. But is there anybody like new that's just like, oh, that's interesting. I never thought to approach uh, the medium or. It's like picking a favorite child, uh, <laughs> you know? with street artists or graffiti writers or printmakers, I don't, at any given moment, someone is my favorite. And just because they're not my, someone isn't my favorite at that particular moment in time doesn't mean that I don't like them. You know, there are artists that I love, 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 like Sean Hannaway and uh, Baldor uh, Helgeson, who's been getting so much play with like major galleries around the world. and juxtapose magazine and Garrick Erdman and Tom Billings and JC Rivera and um, Vivian Lee and Kawhi Suga, AKA Samar Medina, um, Penny Pinch. I, I love them all for various reasons, you know, um, and there are a lot more that I love for other reasons. Um, Deal, who just joined, Deal is an amazing painter and illustrator. Um, he's from Chicago, he works with St. Alfred thanks to um, those who are joining in who probably have, you know, questions and inquiries about Gallery F. But I think that's like so bold. It's because you're investing, you and initially your partner and your family are investing in a physical space for these artists because you believe that there should be, you know, an avenue, a way for um, people to find out about the art. So what was it that really propelled you to be like, if I don't do this, 
you know, I, I'm, I may regret it. Living all over the U.S., places like galleries never really like invited or, or, or pertained to people like myself. And mm -hmm. if, you know, people like myself, there are lots of, there are more of us than there are of them, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't like the, the classism and, and stuff like that, um, that I believed. I'm a Scorpio, so I'm hypersensitive. I, you know, most of the time I'm just making up my head. He's, um, a, he's a water baby. <laughs> so galleries typically got, you know, the bad rap for, uh, you know, a lot of it's warranted, but um, not welcoming the average um, person off the street in their galleries. Uh, and I wanted a place that uh, was a lot more engaging and encouraged people to come in and look at art and ask questions and talk to people and hang out, you know. The, the gallery, if anyone's seen any pictures of the bins or been to the gallery, is, is kind of, um, it deals back to my days at Jelly's, um, the record store. So a lot of the inventory is in these large acrylic um display things and it's like flipping through records you know oh. uh, nothing sucks more than going to, well a lot of things suck more than going to, <laughs> <laughs> but nothing sucks let's not make a list now a, <laughs> but traditionally a gallery doesn't have their inventory on the floor they only have typically whatever they're exhibiting at that particular time there are a lot of favorite galleries that i would go to a lot and i would say okay do you have this artist and they're like sure let me go into the back and then like 15 minutes later they come out in white gloves and they show me i'm like okay great do you have this and they're like yeah sure and it's like you know look at three things it'll take like an hour you know i'm like oh. the prints and a lot of the street art uh editions uh, or even originals on paper and stuff they would be displayed on the floor in these oversized record bins and you would flip through them you were doing um prints do you still push your art out not so much i don't really have any time anymore um i was screen printing before the gallery and then yeah. short after i opened the gallery but then I was at the gallery literally seven days a week because at that time, my partner who was supposed to be at the gallery uh, never worked at the gallery. So, oh. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what a punk ass. Punk ass. But anyways, yeah. So I just wanted a place that was a lot more inviting. I have been working on stuff, but mostly... You know, I mean, I, I quite honestly don't have any time with physically being at the gallery and then physically working on populating the website because we, we literally are adding new items, even though the Bro, door is physically I tried closed. To, I, tried to go, well, I went on the, the website earlier. I was scrolling in the, the product section of Gallery F. Uh, was it galleryf.com, Gallery F yeah. Chicago? Either one of those will direct you to galleryf.com. When I went to the products page, I mean, it's a great example of the infinite scroll that people yearn for when they're on social platforms. So, I mean, just seeing how many artists you have and then within uh, their, the different offering. We, we have artists from all over the world. I, we got seven sketches from Honolulu there. We have uh, guys from Manila. We have guys from England, Germany, all over the U.S., pretty much every state in the U.S. Yeah, so we have people from everywhere. How do people find out about Gallery F? Well, you know, people all day long, like every day, all day at all hours of the night, <laughs> um, will reach out to us to see if they, you know, if we could include them in the gallery. But it, it's impossible. First and foremost, you need to either be a printmaker working in street art or mural process. You know, I mean, people are like, well, I'm a photographer. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not a gallery that focuses on photography. Yeah. Well, I do sculptures. Well, I don't work on <laughs> You know, you need to, if you're an artist and you're not a printmaker and you're not a, an active street artist uh, and, and muralist, uh, you work in another medium, mm -hmm. you make yarn art. Go to a gallery that focuses on yarn art. But we all but I could be your first man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so I mean, that's, that's just one of those conversations. It's one, as an artist, you should really know the venue. One, yeah. Support the gallery by coming to openings. Yes. <laughs> follow my Instagram. You don't follow my Instagram. Why do I care? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I mean, not why do I care, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. you don't, you don't support me in any way, but you want me and the gallery to work with you. Start mm -hmm. by showing face, coming to exhibitions. Yeah. yeah. Get familiar. Get familiar with the staff, yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. 
I yeah. get it. But I, I think those are newer artists. Maybe they're just really new to the medium. Just assume that it's a, a given. Whatever medium you work in starts, you know, working, approaching galleries that are in the same medium as you. You know, just because you might be the most awesome yarn artist doesn't mean if we've never done anything with yarn arts, doesn't mean that that's something we're waiting to do. Look at galleries that do work in that medium. You know, <laughs> I've had people. Like that you're like, citing oh. yarn. Yeah. I like that you're using that example because, by well, the way, 2012, yeah, yeah. a lot of yarn artists were submitting stuff, and no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was 2012. <laughs> Reading a comment from Tevin's uh, seven 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 seven. Oh yeah, please please scroll if you're able yeah. to. Nice work on the garage doors in Logan Square. Very cool. That was another thing. It's like you know, a lot of uh, property owners. We have alleys in Chicago, and mm. uh, garages, and the garage doors would always get tagged a lot of times with uh, gang graffiti. So we just asked the property owners if we could put a mural on the garage door and that would make the gang graffiti go to the garage. <laughs> to the right, oh, to the left, oh, oh. no longer on their garage. So Yeah, people uh, are really polite about that. When it comes to street art or graffiti or whatever people call it, designate it, when they see someone's piece up, more, mostly they'll just leave it alone. They'll just find another wall to tag. So I think that's a really nice thing. Where was the first gallery F? in Chicago before you moved to Logan Square? Across the street. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so far across the street. <laughs> like, oh, how are we going to move everything? Yeah, we had a, an awesome guy who worked for us at the time. He's, he's a local muralist, his name is Mosier. He did the vast majority of the work. You know, he would come in three days a week and we would, he would just, I would say we. <laughs> uh, Mo, he would uh, hand truck stuff back and forth across the street, you know, from the gallery for weeks. God bless his soul. He, <laughs> the lease expired and um, I moved across the street to where I currently am. Some time ago, he and his family were going to be vacationing in the islands and we we're going to do a proper recording, a Hawaii POV. And uh, so instead of being on quarantine for 14 days, remains in Chicago with his family and the, the, your gallery is uh, open, though. Is it open for business or just online and you go in to do mailings? We do a lot of online. We've had to, unfortunately, um, discont or, or put a halt on international orders just because mm -hmm. the packages, they, you know, they get picked up and they get to the border and then they get return shipped um, mm -hmm. because the borders are closed. Luckily, we've spent years building online presence, and Instagram has been very helpful with that because we have numerous accounts on there. We touch the internet all day long, every day, you know, um, just to keep uh, maintaining a status on the uh, internet hierarchy. The more we use the internet, the more relevant we become, and um, we get suggested a lot more. What are you and your family, uh, your wife and your daughter, how has everything been since you've been having to stay in? We're not totally on lock. You're just not, you should not be outside if you don't need to be outside. Yeah. Really, my wife and my daughter uh, have almost not left the house in weeks. And I'm out there since I go to the gallery to pack orders several days a week. I make sure I run my errands, pick up groceries. I would say pick up, you know, essentials like toilet paper and hand sanitizer, but those don't exist in Chicago. Haven't been, you, haven't, you can't find them. I have an extra, uh, what is that, Clorox spray thing if you need it? Oh, that's like gold. Hang on to it. Luckily, I had plenty of that before because I, like, uh, I like using that. You're kind of, not OCD, but you, you keep things pretty tidy. I uh, try sometimes. Yeah. What's going on behind you? What's all with the, the art behind you? Mostly outsider artists. This one is Clam Nation. He's a freight and moniker artist. It's uh, on a collection of books. Mm -hmm. um, Guzzo Pink, who is a Midwest artist who paints with oils and acrylics. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is, it's like so hard to like, oh, which way is my hand moving? <laughs> like uh, Ricky Willis, who, uh, Ricky Willis is the younger brother of Wesley Willis, who is a, um, a well-known um, outsider artist and musician. Mm -hmm. Worked with the Beastie Boys back in the day. Um, uh, Ricky and Wesley both had um, 
mental disorders. Um, Wesley was a, a paranoid schizophrenic and he passed away some years ago, but mm -hmm. um, Ricky works with a, an organization called Project Onward um, and they have a lot of uh, uh, adult artists with um, mental or learning disabilities. Um, and I, I like going there or I like supporting the artists there. Some vintage Krylon cans, Tom Billings over there. What are you, what are you wearing? Klaus Nomi. <laughs> what was that group that um, Einzer, Einzer? Einzer de Neubauten, Collapsing New Buildings. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was another, the, another uh, musical artist I, I think about. I think Billy and mm. Attrition. Attrition, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Tear Garden. That was. Tear, uh, teardrop Explodes? No, the what? Tear Garden. But Teardrop Explodes is. is one I rarely I think Crazy George listened to that more than me. Sorry. <laughs> God bless his soul. I love that guy. He was he was you oh, know. oh yeah, let's do that. Let, let's like do the kind of connect the dots. I don't know how much time yeah. we have on this, but um Crazy George was a cat who worked at Magoo's and the Scrawling stuff. Wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a DJ and he like you, you know, he wouldn't be offended. He consumed a great amount of acid. Yes. All day, every day. Yes. He had all this like great, uh, really deep trivia information. Where did he come from? And I don't know. I, I, know. <laughs> I only know him from Puck's Alley and then Jelly's. You know, he wasn't really a nightclub kid. His musical tastes and his just knowledge always like heavily inspired me, you know. Uh, he was an amazing guy. Jelly's time. So that's like 1980s. Then Raul. Raul, who lives here in the mainland somewhere. Raul De Hill with Rat Dog. Was it Rat Dog? Yeah, Rat Dog was his punk rock band. Yeah. I remember he had like... Curly hair. Or, oh, I was going to say dreadlocks, but you're right. He had curly hair. And he what, was there muscle, muscle t-shirts. Yeah, he, he like... like I mean, in those, I wore yet. those crop t-shirts. You remember? Yeah, so those, yeah, yeah. Those T-shirts with the great personality back then. With the short, short uh, OP. I remember it was the trifecta was like Mari, Raul, and Crazy George. Peter Bond said it was a the double dog. dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rat dog. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm filling in the bite. Swiss cheese. This memory I got. Continuing on with uh, Galleria. Was there ever plans for expansion before Corona, Corona, Rona? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe something in the 808, perhaps. Oh. Well, I am excited about whatever you plan to do. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with the, uh, with the physical space, I, I want to talk. Is that okay to talk more about Gallery F? I mean, sure. Super Niele. When you would have uh, gallery shows, would you also be a sponsor for musical events? Like you would do some like local outreach also that, in that fashion, you know what I mean? Or would everything be like at the, at the store? Well, I have um, Mike who's worked for me for several years. You know, I've had a couple of employees uh, time to time, basically a one or two man thing my wife helps me out so much now and mike who works at the gallery does a lot of photoshop for me and that is an all-day thing you know and then being open you know we're our doors are open um we were seven days a week but then it just became way too much being there seven days a week so i cut it back down to five days a week you know, i was closed on tuesdays and wednesdays um because everything in chicago is closed on mondays it just became too much work and everyone's always pitching great ideas for us to do and contribute to their their events or their organ you know whatever they're doing outside of the gallery and they just don't understand how much work that is you know mm -hmm. i don't have a, a plet your favorite word i remember plethora of employees who can go and do things for me you know plethora <laughs> that was your favorite word back in the day <laughs> oh my gosh I have a plethora of plethoras. Am I saying this right? I don't care. I don't care. That's so cool. I'm so happy. Oh, I have, I, I was curious about this timer. So there's a 60 minute 
window and it gives a countdown. So we have a, a minute 45 right now. All right. You know, I'm sure after the plague, there'll be a lot more available Wi-Fi like everybody's <laughs> now. <laughs> they can't. Don't call it a plague. Call it a pandemic. Mm. Branding. <laughs> <laughs> We want to because we want to make sure we're talking about the right Corona Rona, you know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, anytime. Always look, look, you know. Enjoy talking to you. Oh, you too, Billy. I miss the, I, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people back there that we miss. I love. 